Discover the hidden mysteries of wealth and entrepreneurial success placed in Scripture to advance God's kingdom. This is the Ms. Bankable Show, where you'll learn biblical and practical keys needed to unlock your business's six-figure potential. Kingdompreneurs, it's time for Marketplace Dominion. And now, here's your host, the business-building expert herself, Ms. Sade Banks. Hello and welcome to the Miss Bankable Show where today our topic of discussion is victorious, the power of focus in warfare. Praise the Lord Jesus with everything that is going on in our country, in the churches, just in the world, period. How many of you can recognize that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is fighting for his inheritance, fighting for his church, fighting for his nation, the United States of America. And we as entrepreneurs, we aid, we help, we empower that fight with all of the finances and the opportunities that we create for him to sustain and to win the war. Hallelujah. So without further ado, I want to welcome you again to the Miss Bankable Show where we shoot every single Monday. We go live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure that you're liking my page. Make sure that you're subscribing to the YouTube. Make sure that you're commenting, that you're sharing. If you're on Facebook, make sure to invest and send in those stars. Send in those comments and those hearts. It is so appreciated. I love interacting with you guys. I always go back. I review I comment. If God gives me a word for you, I deliver it. And also during this um, broadcast, you know that I just love, 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 love as a prophetic minister of the Lord Jesus Christ to pray for kingdom businesses. So please make sure that in the chat box, you are commenting your business so you can get prayer. And today's show, again, we're going to be talking about how to remain victorious and how to utilize and harness the power of focus to win even on the battlefield with Apostle Tracy Waterford, an ex-military official herself, now an apostle. Um, she has a school of the prophet. She's doing some major things. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned and share this out with your friends. So today's show is sponsored by From Broke to Bankable webinar. So if you want to know the seven ways that you can structure and systematize your business to get six figures in one year, you're going to want to go to my website, www missbankable.com sign up the webinar is free just stay on my website for about um about five seconds then you're going to see a pop-up inviting you to register go ahead and register for that webinar you don't want to miss it it's about an hour long and it is packed full of knowledge full of wisdom full of eternal strategies and practical strategies to help you build grow a bankable business and also you guys know i am a brand ambassador praise the lord i am a brand ambassador for such a lady extensions you see my hair yes she is holding up beautifully i want to thank mrs ashley figures for her very generous donation of this hd 60 inch milk silk closure as well as the 16s and the 18 uh, length bundles that she offered me in milky and minky straight <laughs> i'm on tongue tied today y'all i hope y'all praying for me it's been a long day but nevertheless god's grace is sufficient enough hallelujah and then finally i want to let you guys know about my new brand ambassadorship with Ashley C's Cosmetics. You see these eyes? Yes, 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 yes. You like it? You like the colors? Today I am wearing Go Go Gold and I am wearing Blue Aquamarine from the Ashley C's Cosmetics. It's an all natural minerals line by Apostle Ashley C. Clater here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She's my senior apostle here at the Congregation of the Mighty and she has launched a beautiful makeup line. You guys can go and support her and you can get 10%, you can get 15% off until July 31st. Her website is AshleyCCosmetics.com. Again, use the code Summer Sale 22. Summer Sale 22 to get 15% off her entire line. She has body stuff, hair stuff, makeup. Everything is natural, lip glosses, and it's of the highest quality. I love her BB cream. And also, I forgot to mention, for Such A Lady Extensions, if you go to her website, Such A Lady Extend, Such A Lady 
xtend.com punch in the code miss bank you can get 15 percent off your hair your lashes as well so you want to make that investment she has excellent quality services i'm not going to suggest anything to you guys that is not creme de la creme because mm -hmm. i like quality and i know you do too because you're watching me glory to god all right so let's go ahead and get started without further ado again make sure that you're punching in your business if you want to receive a breakthrough in your business if you got some promises of god that's locked up in your business and you're just waiting for them to explode to to dispense into your life into uh your harvest that god has promised you then please go ahead put your business name into the chat my staff will write it down they'll give it to me and i'll pray for about one or two of you tonight and we actually have a testimonial from tree of life naturals tree of life naturals actually from the prayers that i've done for them on the show they now have a wholesale deal with a retailer in a whole nother state come on here and that deal is so lucrative that they're actually able to open up another business tree of life distribution so now they have a whole distribution wholesale company on top of their home products because from this lucrative deal so i want you to go ahead put your name in the comments to get prayer hallelujah now finally let me introduce the woman of god as i said our topic of discussion on today is victorious the power of focus in welfare and warfare excuse me so apostle tracy waterford has been raised up as has been raised up by Christ as a powerful prophetic voice for our time. As an apostle with a strong prophetic mantle, her focus is on training and equipping the saints of the Most High God, and that she does. Amazing power, anointed vessel of God. Tracy delivers a revelant and revelatory word which brings forth deliverance and spiritual breakthrough in the lives of God's people. She flows under a unique apostolic, prophetic and teacher anointing which is effective in breaking barriers come on here how many of y'all need some barriers to be broken off of your life and false paradigms in order to build establish equip and prosper those to whom she has been called and sent apostle tracy is the founder and visionary of coast to coast network above reproach ministries and coast to coast equipping college come on here her mandate by the Lord is to restore foundational integrity by empowering and authorizing king governmental liter leaders responsibly. To this end, she labors continuously to standardize and professionalize the offices excuse me, the offices of the 1 Corinthians 1228 in order to produce competent, credible, efficient leaders whom the Holy Spirit will be able to deploy whenever the kingdom has need of them. Praise the Lord. She is anointed author of the book Prophets Ordained by God, um, hate me in my transition and the resurgence of the mantle, which is used as per, uh, as used as a prophetic training guide around the globe. As a leader in the body of Christ, she believes in being submitted and accountable to authority, and that she 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 really does believe that. And covering. And in her covering, Chief Apostle Dr. Paula Price here at the Congregation of the Mighty in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She is currently resides in Fayetteville, North Carolina with her husband, Dr. Dwayne Waterford and their four young men. So without further ado, let's welcome in Apostle Tracy Waterford. Hey, how you doing, woman of God? Hello. I'm so excited to be here on the Miss Bankable show today. I'm excited Ooh. about this topic. I mean, girl, you got me stirred up already. And we haven't even begun yet. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So before we begin, I'd like to start off with some scripture, the basis of our discussion on today. So y'all, y'all here, church, church, get out your Bibles. Yes, we talk about Jesus and we are going to uphold his word on the Miss Bankable show. So we're going to cover today Nehemiah 4 verses 7 through 9. And Nehemiah 4, 15 through 19, okay? So get your Bibles out. This is the foundation. God is the foundation. His scripture is the foundation of everything that we do as his apostles, 
prophets, prophets in training, marketplace prophets, business people, all believers of Jesus Christ. So when Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, Ammonites, and Ashiodites heard that the repair to the wall of Jerusalem was progressing, that the gaps were being closed, they became furious. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem to throw it into confusion. Hear that. So we prayed to our God and stationed a guard because of them that day and night. Verse 15, when the enemies heard that we knew their scheme and that God had frustrated it, every one of us returned to his work on the wall. From that day on, half of the men did the work while the other half held spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers supported all the people of Judah who were rebuilding the wall. The laborers who carried the loads worked with one hand and held a weapon with the other. Each of the builders had his sword strapped around his waist while he was building and the trumpeter was beside me. So Apostle Tracy Waterford, what, do, what does that scripture, what is God saying about that scripture pertaining to kingdom building and his entrepreneurs in this season? You know, God is really talking about us staying focused regardless of what is going on. You know, we're in a season, we've just come out of a season of, you know, where COVID had everybody, you know, running around and spinning their heels, not really knowing what was going on, not knowing, you know, what's happening from day to day, whether people would be here from day to day, you know. And so, you know, even now as we've come out of that, there is still a lot of confusion and distraction. And so God is really wanting us to get stabilized and find that place of focus again. Again, you know, finding that place of focus, because when we are distracted, there is no way we can accomplish what God has called us to accomplish. And this is where a lot of people in the kingdom of God are right now. They're, they're confused. You know, they know I got a vision. You know, I haven't, I haven't, you know, I have some understanding on what God has called me to do, but even in the midst of that, with those, with those little knowledges, there are still, um, that place of being just distracted and confused, not knowing exactly what is going on and where do I go next? What do I do next? You know, and so that's kind of where we are in God. So God is saying, I need you to get stabilized right now. I need you to learn how to get in the battle and fight and work at the same time without getting distracted every time an arrow comes your way. My God. Oh, that's good. That is good. And so I love in the scripture when they actually mention how the enemy used, you mentioned chaos, apostle, uh, uh, confusion, how the enemy actually used the tactic of confusion to try to draw off or delay the work of the Lord, the rebuilding. And so guys, these are some things that you have to recognize. God is pre-warning us in his word, what the enemy uses to delay, to hinder, and to stop the work of the Lord. And he uses confusion. Hallelujah. As the apostle said, stabilize yourself. So let's get into the topic of focus, right? And so what is the purpose of warfare, apostle Tracy? And how does God use it to make us more like him? You know, when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt, you know, they, they did not meet just God, the father, you know, mm -hmm. they met God, they met the God of war, you know, and, and so coming up out of Egypt, you know, even as we are transitioning out of certain areas in our lives, we have to meet the God of war. OK, because when we encounter the God of war, he uses war for a specific purpose. He uses warfare for a specific purpose for the children of Israel. As they were transitioning, it was to create a nation for himself, to make a people that were like him. OK, and as we are going through our own processes, coming through our own warfare, God is using this warfare to make us like him, you know, but let's just be honest, a lot of the church, you know, we, we, we're a little ignorant when it comes to warfare. You know, we like to try to tuck our tail and run. We like to put our head down under the desk, like when a tornado is coming, we <laughs> like to try to play possum. You know, we do anything and everything we can to get up out of warfare. When God has called that, you know, God is using that particular warfare to make us like him and to produce a certain thing, okay? He's using it to produce a certain thing. You know, I was reading in scripture um, in Isaiah 9, okay? And it gives this particular verse and it talks about how the boots of the warrior and their uniforms are blood stained by war. Ooh. And it says this, that they will all, all these things, all the uniforms, everything is going to be burned by fire. Okay. It's going to be fueled for the fire. Okay. And so if we are warriors going to war, we have to become the fuel in that fire. 
We have to become the fuel in the fire. And so, because when we're in the battlefield, when we're in the midst of a battle, guess what? We don't take our uniform off. We don't take our stuff off. We stay right there. We go in the fire, fully dressed, fully battled. We become the fuel for the fire. But the wonderful thing about becoming the fuel for the fire is that fire always purifies gold, okay? Job said it like this, when I have gone through, I shall come forth as gold, okay? He didn't say I shall be kind of like gold or I shall be somewhat like, I shall come forth as gold, okay? I thought that that was so poignant and so powerful because he says, when I come out, I'm going to be gold. I want you guys to understand when you come out, you are going to be gold. Now, let's look at what is gold. First off, gold is currency. Okay? Oh, gold is when I come out of this, I'm coming out as currency. OK, when I come out of this, I'm going to be able to profit you something. If you connect with me, baby, because of what I went through, you will profit. OK, when I come up out of this, I'll be able to profit the kingdom of God. OK, I will be able to give God. Some, God will have something to use when I come up out of this. OK, because gold is profitable. It is a currency. This is the strength of your soul in warfare determines your profitability to God. OK. Ooh. It determines how beneficial you will be for God, how useful you will be to God. Look, you can't get much on the penny. You can't go into any store and get, no, go to JC Penny, go to Macy, go to Dillard's. You're not going to get much on the penny. You're not going to get much on a dime. OK, but when you're working with some gold, baby, you can get what you need. You can get what you want. The, the, you know, the Bible talks about how money is a defense. Money is a defense. Money defends you. OK, but you got to be able to go through to become to be able to come out as that gold so that you will be a defense. You know, absolutely. And I love that. So hashtag I am gold. Hashtag Ooh. I am gold. Make that prophetic declaration over your soul and over your life. That was so powerful. Me and my staff back here ready to just lay out just on that question. <laughs> And so how can we use the power of focus as an advantage on the battlefield, Apostle? I mean, can, can I just back up just real briefly? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Because I, I want to point out the time, point out the fact that every time we see warfare in, the, in scripture, especially when we're looking in the New Testament, it's attached to apostleship. OK, it's attached to apostleship. And, you know, we have a lot of people in the body of Christ that want to shun apostleship. And when you shun apostleship, you shun what comes from, you know, your warfare. You you don't even know how to fight without true apostles. You don't even know how to battle without true apostles. You know, and even scripture begins to talk about apostolic emphatics. OK, well, that's what I'm pulling up out of this thing. Apostolic emphatics. When we begin to look at second Corinthians 10 and four, that's an apostolic emphatic. That's not something that, com that that comes for the whole body at large. So when Paul begins to talk about, look, you think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. You know, you, 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 though we are, we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He was talking apostolically. This was an apostolic emphatic. And so in order to be able to war effectively and go through battles effectively, there has to be that connection to apostleship. There has to be that connection to apostleship. That's what God was placing in scripture to let us know we have to be connected if we want to see the increase that comes through that. And you attach that to another apostolic emphatic in scripture, which is what Philippians 4, where he talks about, and my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. That's an apostolic Amen. emphatic. It does not come to everybody just because you are in the church. If you are connected to certain leaders, you are not going to get that type of warfare experience. You're not going to get that type of victory in warfare. It comes through apostleship. That, that's supplying all of your needs according to his riches and glory. It comes through apostleship. And so we've been trying to pull on the wrong mantles to get a release in our lives and it does not happen we've been trying to come through warfare we're coming through bruised broken like the gates of jerusalem that they were talking about look yes. the gates come are burnt down they're broken down they are burnt with fire and we're in the midst of warfare looking like that and because we don't connect to the apostles that we need to connect to we don't get the victories that we need to get in our lives and i think that that is so key and so important for us to understand as it relates to that profitability and what God uses warfare for because God, it's the apostles that make people look like Christ through the apostles doctrine. Yes. Okay? Because warfare is to make us look like Christ. 
is to make us look like God. That comes through apostleship because, because the gospel was handed to the apostles. It was committed unto them. Jesus said, look, I, I, I give to you a kingdom. I appoint unto you a kingdom. That went to the apostles. That did not just come to any and everybody. And so we have, a, we have an entire body of, in the church that wants to just take this these scriptures and use them for their own. And they're not seeing the results because they did not connect to the right mantle. Mm, that's so powerful. And when you were speaking, I thought specifically of that scripture where, where um, Jesus tells Peter, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, what was Peter's state stats? Um, excuse me. What was his station in God? He was an apostle. So upon the rock of apostleship will the gates of hell not prevail against God's church. So I'm all in with Apostle Tracy. Scripturally, we see it that we have to be under the umbrella of apostleship in order to really reap the uh, the true harvest for this next dispensation, for this uh for where we are at now, you got to get under the covering and the mantle of apostleship. Praise the Lord, the authentic, true word of God. And so let me ask you, with everything that's going on, we are seeing a lot of, um, without mentioning any names, the tithing, no tithing. What do we do with our money? How do we give? Now, prophetically and epistatically, we know when we see this going on, when people start getting funny about their money and what they want to give God, the treasuries of the kingdom of God are officially under attack. And they are under attack by doctrines of devils, doctrines of men, and false belief systems. So in your experience as an apostle and your eternal supernal knowledge that you have of the Lord Jesus Christ and with the spirit of money, what would you, how would you identify some false doctrines that are attacking God's uh, harvest and his monies? I mean, easy. I mean, first off, the, the, the one that, the one that you're really speaking about is uh, talking about tithing is um, under the law, which we know is not true because right. it predates the law. You know, tithing came from an eternal being. We see it first show up in Melchizedek and he was eternal without mother, without father. OK, right. so it was an eternal thing. Tithing has always been eternal. It has nothing to do with being under the law. It did not come from the law. So you can't use the light, the law to shut it down. And so it's imperative that the body of Christ begins to understand this because now their treasuries are drawn up because they are attacking God's treasuries. Look, if you yes, attack right. God's treasuries, you will never have a treasury of your own. You will mm -hmm. never have your get your you will not be stopped because you have taken his stock. OK, and listen, I've experienced and I have learned through tithing that God will turn it on a dime. OK. Oh, yes. He will turn your entire life on a dime. And I'm talking about that 10 percent, baby. He will turn your life on that because it's a, first off, we're talking about victory in war. The tithing is like a war tax. OK, you go look, whatever you get, you give that to God and God will begin to shift everything in your life. We don't understand that. We don't understand that. And because of that, we've listened to these doctrines of devil, the devils that come to try to rob us. OK, they come to rob the people of God, but not just the people of God. The goal, the ultimate goal is to hinder the work of Jesus Christ, to stop Absolutely. his progress. To st Look, every king needs a treasury. OK, mm. you cannot be a king and not have a treasury. All right. And so what the enemy does is, OK, I'm going to use the people to attack Jesus's treasury. He's using people that are in Christ's kingdom to attack his treasury, double agents. OK, so they're double agents in the body of Christ, not even realizing that they are double agents. And so we have got to be able to come and learn first off scripture. We yes. must learn scripture. And because of because we don't learn scripture properly, we'll accept anything anybody says. But well, watch how the enemy does. I'm going to use the big names. Oh, I'm going to use the big name. I'm going to use the influential one. I'm going to use those. Yeah. I'm going to use those to attack that, to attack Christ. And mm -hmm. that's what he's doing. And the reason, so the reason, well, and, and it, and it, it works perfectly for people's flesh because I don't oh, want to get yes. I, I don't want to get the tithe anyway. Right. You know? Tithing is warfare. <laughs> they think giving, giving a tithe is warfare for them, you know, but listen, you can, you cannot afford to not tithe. You cannot, Absolutely. you can, you can't. 
Absolutely not. And when we think about the feudalist system, because the kingdom of God, I want you guys to look this up, is based on for entrepreneurs, is based on the feudalist system. So basically, when you have the local people in the towns, they would give money to the king specifically to be able to protect their lands, to protect their fields, to protect different things. They would give the king duty. OK. And so when you don't pay, then when here comes the devourer. When you don't pay, your fields are not secured. When you don't pay, you're growing this business. You're growing and doing all of these things, but you're doing it in vain because God is not keeping your city. He's not keeping your fields. Why? Because you're robbing him. So do not fall under this illusion that you can sin against God, that you can rob him in tithes and offering and still grow this million dollar or six figure business. Don't fall under that. Now we're talking about somebody that's worth $60 million, has a whole kingdom, okay? Now how much do you got in your bank account and how much can you stand to lose? You better tithe, hallelujah. Do right by God. And so let's move on. So with so many businesses shut down during COVID-19, a lot of people, is, loss and grief is rampant throughout our land. And so many entrepreneurs, they're suffering from disillusionment. They don't want to get back in the fight. They just want to go and quit and, and find that moment of reprieve or those bliss fixes, as our chief apostles say. How can these entrepreneurs who just is like, you know, I already lost the business to COVID-19. I really just don't have the strength or the faith enough to get back in the fight. What would you say? How can we help them? I, I would say consider it a divine reset. Consider mm. consider it a divine reset. You know, we're in a time where we really need to begin to reevaluate the vision that God has given us. Doesn't mean to change the pattern that the Lord showed you, but sometimes you might need to just reconsider. But I would definitely say don't get out of the fight. Get back in the fight. Because why? Because glory is an after effect. Ha! Glory is an after effect. It only comes after, okay? After you have taken the victory. Listen, you don't get the crown until you've killed the king, all right? Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't get that until after you have won the battle. And so because just because you got knocked down once or twice, just because things dried up, get up and get back in the fight. You know, we, we, we tend to, you know, get so disillusioned when, when we get hit hard. And, and, and let's just let's just realize that that COVID was it was hard. It was a hard hit for so many people. That, I mean, there was so many people like, man, I'm, you know what? Well, some use it as a cop out, but then some of the people really got knocked out with it, and they want to get up and get back in business. So I would say to them, get up and get back in the business, get back in the fight, get back in the battle, because God is going to restore if you fight, if you get back. And can we just look at the fact that Corona in Latin means crown? Okay, we have to take the crown of the enemy if we want to get the victory. Okay, My if God. we want to get that, if we want to get back to that place of victory, we have to take the crown, and that that's a a place where, you know, people struggle at, man, because you're thinking, man, I fell before. And it really wasn't you failing. But so we have to come back to the place where um, it, it happens. Now I have to get back up. We got to take the crown of our enemies because that's what the enemy sent it as. Enemy sent it as a crown. As, as, the enemy sent it to attack you. But God said you can recover from this and take the crown of that enemy. Because remember, crowns are made out of gold. Okay. Glory. You know, when you look at that word glory, it, it deals with abundance. It deals with, uh, it deals with, um, increase it deals with weightiness and substance okay and crowns are gold all right take the crown of your enemy get back up and take the crown of your enemy don't be afraid take the crown and you will win but you got to muster up the ability within yourself to fight again mm. Yes, absolutely. You definitely have to be able to draw on the strength of the Holy Ghost, draw on faith and get back up again. I mean, I think about when you were speaking, I think about a small child, right? A child when they're walking, when they're first learning to walk, they fall on their bum many, many times, but they don't give up. We need to have that same resilience, that same push, that same forever to be able to get back up again and go out here in the battlefield and take this territory and win nations for our God through our businesses. And so the thing is, once we're in war, because we always hear warfare, 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 right? But how do you know when you won? How, how do you capture the spoils of war? 
you know, uh, again, I'm going to go back to the crown analogy. You know, mm. you've taken the crown of your of your adversary when you when you begin to see increase again. OK, yeah. when you begin to see that progress once again. All right. You know, you got it. You know, because listen, crowns and victories go together. You know, crowns and crowns and victories go hand in hand. When you take the crown, you get the victory. You know, I, I can I, I'm gonna just give this little piece of, of my testimony. Yes. When the Lord when the Lord showed me my um, mantle coming out of the heavens, it had a gold crown attached to it. You know what? I did not realize that meant I was about to go through some stuff and not just go through, but it's gonna be a continual fight, a continual battle, because you have to be able to have that conquering mentality because there's always gonna be something to try to take you down. There's always gonna be try something that try to takes your wealth. There's always going to be something that tries to really pull you away from the destiny that God has for your life. So you know when you begin to, when you've won, you know when you've broken through because now there's progress. Before you were bumping into walls, before you was hitting walls every time you turned around, you couldn't even, you could barely hear God in the midst of that. Now when you break through, now you can hear God clearly. Now you begin to see that process. You begin to see the progress again. And even when those little small pockets of resistance pop up, they don't throw you back into a PTSD moment. You know, they don't throw you back into those psycho-emotional pits of despair, you know, mm -hmm. because you got your foot in back, you know. And so you maintain your steps because, listen, all the warfare and the trial and the testings, they come they come to make you like God. They come to make sure that God can prove you, that God can use you, okay? Because remember, God's not going to use anything that he's not going to try, okay? He's going to try you before he'll use you. He'll try you before he'll use you. Think about it. You're not going to put on them nice little heels and walk outside if you haven't tried them out. You're not going to do that. You're going to break that, fall down and break your neck in front of everybody. You know, you're not going to do that. You're going to make sure I've tried this thing out. That's how God does with his people. OK, you're talking about you want this uh, this six to seven figure uh, uh, business, but you won't want to be tried. Can I try you in the finances? Can I try you? Can I dry up your wealth and you still come back strong? Can hey. I dry up everything you have and you'll still come back strong when your brook dries up? What will you do? OK, what would you do? And so we have to, like you said, draw on the power of the Holy Ghost. Be strengthened by God. Be strengthened with all power and might on the inward man. He said God can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to what? The power that works in you. So you got to find out what first off, what power is working in me? Who? What power is working in me? Because if it's the power of the Holy Ghost, that means I can get back up again. If it's the power of the Holy Ghost, I can get back everything that I lost. Look, go ask David when he went to Ziklag. You can yes. get back everything that you lost if it's the power of God that is at work on the inside of you. So you know that you've won. OK, when, when you begin to see that increase come back, you know that you won when you begin to get that progress and you begin to make process again. You know that you won and you have attained the spoils of victory because now it begins to stack up and you can baby, you can breathe again. You can breathe again. Yes, I, I love that. When you mentioned Ziglag, here they are off at war. Just, you know, warring for warring for the Lord, doing all of this war. And then they come back and the women, the children, everything is gone. They want to kill David. But what does David do? He gets in his quiet place. He goes into his place with the Lord Jesus. And he said, shall I pursue? Shall I go? So should I pursue this? And God said, go pursue, go up and go do it. And so we have to always keep in mind to be listening for that still small voice of the Lord Jesus Christ guiding us leading us and directing us, bringing in our focus, because this is something as well, Apostle, we can get so emotional and our emotions have a voice, right? And it will drown out. If your the voice of your emotions is higher than the voice of the Lord, if your emotional altar is higher than the altar of Jesus Christ in your life, you're going to go off of your emotions and it's going to draw, uh, it's going to silence. You won't be able to hear the voice of the Lord in the way and the capacity that you need to in order to win your battles and to win your war. So some of us need to tune down our emotional altars. Jesus. <laughs> to just tune them down and go like David. Father, shall I go up? Father, shall I pursue? What should I do to get victory in this? And I'm so inspired by our conversation today on today, Apostle. In fact, I'm feeling generous. So today I am offering 15%, no, excuse me, 
we're going to do 10 today. <laughs> 10% off of my entire courses, all of my consultations, my prayer packages. For my prayer packages and my consultations, go to MissBankable.com. Use the code July uh, July Sale. July Sale. For my courses, go to the kvacademy.com and use the code July sale and you will get 22% off. This expires tomorrow at midnight. So make sure that you're going and you're making the investment for yourself, that you're suiting yourself up for battle, suiting yourself up for war and building a business God's way. So Apostle Tracy, do you have any products or services or books that you're offering to the Miss Bankable Show viewers today? Absolutely. I have two books here. I have one, Prophets Ordained by God. Um, this book really deals with uh, the prophet's office, you know, um, how to you, how to know whether you are a prophet or not, what you can expect as a prophet, not so much as a gift, but one who walks in the office of the prophet. This book is going to help you through. Okay. The next one is pro um, The Resurgence of the Mantle. Okay. The Resurgence of the Mantle. This book is more like a workbook, but it tells you why God releases the mantles. What call, what provokes Ooh. the mantles in the earth? Why do the mantles come back into being? Because there was a time, you know, when the apostolic and the prophetic mantles were, were basically dormant in the earth. And now God has really resurrected those mantles. You see a resurgence in the mantle now. So these books right here will help you in your prophetic walk. As a matter of fact, you can get them off of uh, the PPM Global website. Yes. Yes. And that's www ppmglobalresources.com and you can find Apostle Tracy's books there. Okay, now Apostle Tracy, we have a tradition here on the Miss Bankable Show. We pick about one or two businesses to pray for as the Holy Spirit leads. And so today, I'll have you get Remnant Wear, Remnant Wear LLC, and then I will finish up with my jar of oil. You take the lead, Apostle. Amen. Father God, we just thank you right now, God, for remnant wear, Father God. We thank you, God, for what it is doing in the earth. We thank you, Father God, for the plan that you have for it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will begin to breathe on it, Father. We pray restoration over this over this business right now in the name of Jesus, God. We break every restriction, oh God, every place of obstruction, every place, oh God, that has tried to hinder it, Father God, and keep it from producing for the kingdom, oh God. I pray right now, Father God, that you would open up the floodgates right now, Father God. God, give it visibility right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, every place, oh God, that has opposed it right now, Father God, every demonic spirit right now, Father God, that has tried to hinder its flow, Father. I pray, God, in openness right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, even the entrepreneur, Father God, behind it. I pray, God, for greater wisdom, greater strategy, and greater understanding concerning this business. And not just this one, God, God, but the other ones that you're leading and laying on her heart, God, even now in the name of Jesus. So God is laying on your heart even now. More businesses, he's laying on your heart even more directions for you to go into. Amen. So this right here was just the furrow out of the door. This was just your one way out of the door, but God is opening it up for you to have, to, for you to have more. I see God putting your hands in like two or three different pots in the next coming season. So God is saying he's preparing you, which is why you have felt such a tight hold on you. You have felt such a restrictive place on you. God is, God is putting that hold on you so that he can begin to pour into you and prepare you for what God is getting ready to do in the next season. Hallelujah. So Father, I thank you right now, God, for her seasons right now. I thank you, God, for what you are doing and what you are releasing in her life, God. Even as she lays down to rest, oh God, I pray, God, that you will begin to script the rest of her life, oh God. Begin hey. to script the business right now, Father God. Begin to show her the exact steps, oh God, to work it out, Father God. Give her the pattern, oh God, and the strategies to make this thing come into being. So, Father God, right now, we call into fruition, oh God. Everything that you have placed into her, God, everything that you have placed concerning her vision, her business, God, we call it into fruition now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, even now we should mar it, God, and we cover it, Father God. We cover it and we preserve it from the enemy in the name of Jesus. And everything, oh God, that you have spoken concerning these businesses, these, Father God, these um, enterprises even that you have given her, Father God, they shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And my remnant where, for that word, you need to go ahead and you need to sow into the mantle of a power. Apostle Tracy Waterford. Apostle Tracy, can you let her know your cash app, please? Amen. What's your cash app, Tracy? Oh, it's um, cash app C2CPN. 
C2CPN. All right. So make sure that you go ahead and honor that amazing prayer that the Lord just released over your life. And so I'm going to pray for my jar of oil. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just bless you for the abundance of the oil, for the abundance of the power, for the growing and the stretching of the mantle that you are doing in this entrepreneur. We decree and we declare that you have eyes to see and ears to hear what thus saith the Lord concerning your business. We take you off of every path that is not of Christ concerning this interest enterprise that he is birthing through your womb and we say that you will not delay that you will not abandon that you will not stop even yeah. though you're feeling the labor pains even even though you're feeling the stressors and the stress sores of starting a business but we decree and we declare that you're going to push through that you're going to fight that you're going to war that you're going to sharpen your sword and you're going to go forth running with the lord jesus christ for the prosperity of this business we decree hard harvest over you. We decree wisdom over you. We decree knowledge and understanding over you as it pertains to this business. And we break the brass ceiling. We take off the limitations. We break the limitations off of your mind about what God wants to do for this business. Jesus Christ, I pray, Father, that you brood over this entrepreneur even as they sleep, God. That you give them the vision. That you give them the dreams that are required to take this business to the next to the next level in Jesus' name. And also make sure, says the spirit of the Holy Ghost, that when he does begin to pour into you, that you do not go and take his harvest and give it to another. Make sure that your relationship with him is of passion and not just of duty. That it is of passion and not just of duty. Seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the king first and never forget that you are employed by him and your duty is to him and your loyalties is to him above any other. Do not let your family get in the way. Do not let the naysayers get in the way. You have to go forth and do the will of God. So we just strengthen you now and we close off your ear to every familiar devil. We close off your ear to every soul stalker. And we sit in the spirit of power, might, love, peace, joy, and endurance unto you to the owner of my jar of oil. So hallelujah. Thank you so much, Apostle Tracy. What did she did? Um, did she do amazing? Hashtag this bless me. Hashtag this bless me. Thank you so much, woman of God, for coming and joining us here on the Miss Bankable Show today. Amen. 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 And so don't forget, you guys, today is 15 percent. Excuse me. I keep saying 15. It must need to be 15, right? <laughs> Every day today is 10 percent off of my consultations, my products and my services. You can visit www.missbankable.com. Punch in the code July sale, July S A L E to get 10% off of a consultation with me, a prayer advisement, prayer session with me. If you want to look at my courses, I have goal setting courses, business planning courses, spiritual equipping courses for entrepreneurs. Go to www.thekvacademy.com, type in July sale and get. 10% off of your course. It will be automatically downloaded to you. And don't forget to comment and let me know how the courses, how the trainings are blessing you guys. So I will see you guys back here next week, Monday at 6 p.m., where we will be speaking with Dr. Owidia Johnson, who is a life transformation and grief specialist. Some of us can't get to that next level. Some of us can't take our businesses to the height and to the pinnacle that God has because we're stuck in grief. We're stuck stuck in fear, we're stuck in sadness, and we're bound in depression and oppression. But today, God the Deliverer is coming next Monday, and we are going to have an amazing time in the Lord. So thank you for watching the Miss Bankable Show, signing out. Have a blessed week, you guys. Bye-bye.